Hello, everybody. Now let's take a look at problem 7.53, which is in your homework. So in this problem, you're going to be doing some uh, drawing of the phasers. So doing working with phaser diagrams to represent different currents in the circuit below. There's three parts to this problem. The first part is to apply current division. So we'll apply current division the same way that we did in the DC problems, except for we'll use phasers since this is an AC problem. Then we will draw a phaser diagram using IS as a uh, reference. And so this will be a relative phasor diagram. And then finally, we will actually use the, our knowledge of the circuit below to calculate IS in phasor form. And we will draw a phasor diagram that shows the absolute uh, phasor diagram for all three of these currents. So let's get started. So first, we're going to apply current division. So we can see there's two branches in this circuit. IS is going to split between the two. We're going to use current division, just like we used in many DC problems. So to find I, branch in I1, we'll need to multiply by the, uh, the impedance in branch I2, divide by impedance in branch I1 and I2, and similar for current I2. All right. Again, as I mentioned in another video, you can solve this much more quickly it using a calculator. So make sure that you know how to use your calculator to quickly do this type of, of problem. Otherwise, it may take you quite some time. So we can find the rectangular form of I1 and I2 as a function or in terms of IS. And then we can also convert this into the phasor domain, again, quite quickly if you know how to use your calculator. So make sure you know how to do that. Now we've completed uh, um, part A, where we have represented I1 and I2 in terms of IS. So with that done, let's use IS as a reference because we don't know what its phase is or its angle is. And let's generate a relative phasor diagram showing the sum um, is indeed satisfied. All right, so we're, because we're assuming IS has a zero degree reference, I've drawn that uh, completely along the real axis, right? If it had any imaginary component, this would add an angle to it, but we know it doesn't. So I've drawn IS here. Now, I1 and I2 can be represented uh, here in um, green and in purple. And we can see that uh, in, in reference to the current IS, I1 is minus 53.1 degrees below the real axis, and I2 is 36.9 degrees above the real axis. And so these angles are relative to IS. But what if we were to solve this, this whole circuit and find IS? Well, then we could find the absolute angle of I1 and I2. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that we could solve for this using this equation, right? This is basically Ohm's law, right? We can solve for this using Ohm's law, but we're going to need to find the equivalent resistance of this whole, this part of the circuit. That's probably the trickiest part of this. And again, make sure you know how to use your calculator so that these calculations go very quickly so that you can uh, convert rapidly, right? Because it's difficult to do uh, multiplication and division using rectangular complex numbers, but a calculator can do it easily. So we can see that the equivalent uh, um, impedance is going to be this 5 ohm resistor plus these two branches, which are in parallel. So 4 plus J4 is in parallel with 3 minus J3. <clears throat> so, and we can also know from this circuit diagram that the voltage source has zero angle and has a magnitude of 10. So using your calculator, you can quickly find the polar form of this, 1.19 e to the j 3.3. So this is the actual current IS. Recall that I1 and I2, we have already found in terms of IS. This was the first part that we solved for in part A. If we multiply them together, right, now that we know what IS is, we can solve for the actual phaser, I1 and I2, 
uh, when we know what IS is. So let's plot these on a phasor diagram and find the absolute diagram. Okay, so plotting all three of these, we can see that IS is just above the real axis, 3.3 degrees. The <coughs> I2 is 40.2 degrees, 40.2 degrees above the real axis. And I1 is 49.8 degrees below the real axis. So this is how to use phasor diagrams. And you also got to see how to solve a circuit using phasors. I hope this helps you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.